Hello and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to make your first PLC program in Ladder Diagram. Uh, this is a super popular, super common PLC programming language. And to show you how Ladder Diagram works, I'm actually gonna show you the structure text program that I built in the last tutorial. Um, and I'm going to convert that exact program from structured text into ladder line by line with you. But I wanted to show you what the program does first because ladder is a very visual programming language and it's pretty different from C or Python or C sharp. Uh, so, so if you're getting into programming for the first time, that's not a big deal. But if you've been a programmer for a while and you're getting into controls, this is a more useful way to learn it in my opinion. So the code that you can see on screen right now does the following to the PLC. The red light is always on. I have a green status light up here that is always off. And then the blue light turns on when I push the button that's under my index finger. So when I push the button, the blue light turns on with the button. Then down here, the four green status lights over here, I have them go in sequence from zero, position zero, to position one, two, three, and four. Okay, so the whole routine that you see here sets the initial values of all seven of those lights that I just mentioned. And then it says, hey, if the user button was just pressed and the last state of the user button was that it wasn't pressed, add one to this position variable and then end the if statement. Uh, and then it checks if we're in position one, turn L1 on. If we're in position two, turn L2 on. If we're in position three, turn L3 on, four, L4 on. And then if position exceeds four, meaning I pushed it a fifth time, set it back equal to zero. And then lastly, set the last user variable equal to user. Okay, so if you have a PLC, uh, an Arduino PLC, and you're programming along, Make sure that um, from your overview screen, you it kind of looks like this. Uh, I should have started, if I did this the right order, I should have started with a video on how to get set up with your Arduino Opti PLC. Um, so make sure you watch that. If you're not at this step and you're trying to code along exactly with this tutorial, get to this step um, where the license looks okay and all the available interfaces look okay and it says connected in the bottom right. Um, Again, I should have done a tutorial on how to get here, so just check my channel, or if you're watching all these videos smashed together, check the first section of this video for that. Um, now, two other things we did uh, in the structured text video to set ourselves up that you want to double check are in there. We went to button inputs, and the user that is on the front of the PLC, the user button, we added the variable uh, so that we could call it user in our program, so make sure you have user or something easy to remember there. And then for LED outputs, I added the variable names L1 through L4, red, green, and blue to all seven of these lights so that I could call these lights from the PLC as well. So make sure you have all those variable names or you'll be like, hey, my version that I'm trying to follow along with uh, doesn't compile and says that like those variable names don't exist or something like that. Okay, so... Uh, with that basic setup, with these variable names, with these button inputs, uh, let's go ahead and go to project and let's go to add and new program and we'll call this name, we'll call this ladder one because I might do more ladder and make sure you have LD, ladder diagram selected. Structured text was what we did in the last video and we're gonna assign it to fast. So these are different scan rates, fast, slow, backward, uh, background, and init. We might get more into it later or just let me know if you have questions about when to assign what to where. Uh, but we're gonna assign it to fast. No reason not to go fast. Um, and let's just go line by line of what's happening in this main PLC and talk about how to recreate that in ladder. Okay, so the first line is green equals false. So how do we make a line of code in ladder diagram to set an output equal to false all the time? Well, we're gonna use this output coil, which is what this object looks like. We're going to put the variable green in it. And currently what it reads as is actually green is always true. So I'm gonna double click on that coil and I'm going to negate it and this strike through this uh, open parentheses la hash line slash line and then close parentheses reads as not so it's basically green is not on if i copy this whole ladder one and i change this to normal and i change this name to red 
this line of code reads as red is always on. So we have green, always false, red, always true. That's what line one and line two here are doing. And it looks like this in structured text, green is false, red is true. Okay, so you can see right away just with this basic comparison that ladder is a super visual language. There's nothing that explicitly tells you it's true or false. It's telling you based on what sort of relays in electrical schematics look like that green will not be true and red will not be false. Uh, green will not be true and red will always be true. <laughs> so let's look at the next line of code, which if you remember was that blue, the blue light will be exactly equal to the input of the user push button. So I click on that coil again and I say, hey, we're going to control the blue light, but we're going to control it based on an input now. So this is called a contact. These on the right that are controlling outputs are called coils. This on the left is called a contact. And we're going to say equal to the user input. So the way this line of code reads as if user push button is pressed, then blue light is on. But there's a second thing going on here, which is if user push button is not pressed, blue light is off. And that's because this output is a momentary output, which means the blue light will be on as long as the conditions on the left of this rung are true. But by default, the blue light will then go off when the conditions on the left side are false. So this sort of has if user, then blue light and if not user, then not blue light baked into one line of code. So it really is the same way this says blue is equal to user, whether it's true, whether it's false, set blue equal to user. That is basically exactly what this line of code is doing. So, so far we have three for three recreated from structured text. Now, this is us setting the initial value of all four of those lights equal to false. So we're gonna copy this green line, which is uh, uh, this whole rung which is setting uh, green equal to false and let's see can I move that down I really want it in exactly the same I really want it in exactly the same spot there we go so I'm gonna change this to L1 and now rather than make four rungs of code to do the exact same thing for these lights I'm gonna just control C and then control V right here and you can see it sort of puts this branch in which is saying, hey, the same input conditions are true for all of the outputs on this rung. So the four outputs are just L1 through L4, set them equal to not true, um, but the input is shared by all four of them. All right, so this is how we say L1, L2, L3, L4 equals false. That's what rung four through seven here are doing. Let's just keep going. Let's take a look at saying if user and not last user, then position equals position plus one, okay? That's the line of code that checks when the user button is first pressed uh, and adds one to the position incrementer. So to do that, we'll say right click new network after. And now we're gonna check two conditions. We're gonna check if user, and then I'm just gonna control C, control V this. And we're gonna check if not user, so or last user. So last user, but this one needs to be negated. And this is saying if the user push button is pressed and the last user Boolean is not true, then, but we can't use a coil anymore. A coil is specifically just for Boolean conditions. It's for true false things. We need to adjust an integer value, which is called position. Ah, and I forgot to say this in the setup, but if you go to global variables, these two were made for the structured text tutorial the variable last user, which is a Boolean, and I have the initial value set to false, which will be how we track the last state of the user push button, and then position, which is an integer, which will start out as zero, and I have retain on, which means it will uh, keep its value on new iterations of the code being pushed. So if position is set to three, when I update the code, it will stay as a three. Um, and that will track where in the sequence we currently are. So let's go back to our ladder. Just make sure you have these global variables set if you're following along exactly. Um, and we'll say if user and not last user. And now we need a new block. And if, you're, if you don't have this toolbar in here, go to project, no, go to view toolbars, view toolbars, and make sure FBD is on. Uh, if you have a decent size monitor, you can have all of these toolbars on. It doesn't really hurt to have SFC. Um, it's just, it's not something we need right now. 
Um, so, but you do need FBD because new block exists in FBD. And then when you add a new block, uh, this object browser lets you type in text and search for things, but you need to have most of the objects checked and selected. So you could have them all checked and selected. That's not gonna hurt you. It's just gonna give you the most options. And the first thing we wanna check for is an add function. Okay, so ADD, because what we wanna do is say if user and not last user, then add one to position and store that value in the position variable, and then we don't need a coil on this wrong, okay? So this line of code, if user and not user add one to position, looks very visually different from this if user and not last user, then position equals position plus one and if, but those are clones, those are functionally equivalent, okay? And just so I don't forget, because it uh, comes at the very end, but we might as well set it right now, um, we want the last network, so the bottom network in this to be set last user equal to user because uh, ladder logic reads top to bottom and left to right. So every scan of the PLC will start from one and go down to however, however many rungs we have in our code. And then at the end, it will set last user equal to user. So this line of code will only ever be true once at a time per button press, and then last user will immediately get set to the same value as user. Hopefully that makes sense. Uh, now let's add a new rung here to do these steps here, which is if position one, then L1, if position two, then L2, and then all the way through to if four, uh, then four. And so let's just go ahead. We need a new block here. We actually don't need either of these coils, but we need a new block, which will be checking for equality. So that's EQ. And uh, you grab the EQ block and you say, if the position value is equal to one, then L1. And this rung of code is the exact same thing as if position one uh, then L1 from structured text right here. So this is if position one, then L1 equals true. So we just need to copy that one, two, three, four, so that we can say, okay, now if two, then L2, if three, L3, and I somehow got them out of order. Okay, one, two, three, L3, and then if for L4. And now we need just one more rung of code because if you remember from our structured text, we had if position is greater than four, then we need to set position back equal to four. So we'll put in a new network after this and we need two new blocks. We need to check uh, for greater than. So we'll go to block and we'll check uh, GT is the code for greater than. If you ever can't find it, uh, because they're not all named super intuitively, you can just put a star in there and all of them will show up. And a little bit of scrolling, you'll see GE is greater than or equal to, GE, GT is just regular old greater than. And we'll say, okay, if the position variable is greater than four, now the difference here is we don't wanna change a output based on this. We actually want the next uh, block in the rung to be controlled by this. Cause if we just hit another block and we grab MOVE, which is how you move a value into a variable. And we say, this is when we're going to want to move zero into the position value like that. Problem is we need this tied to this. We can't use enable output. This is always going to be true. We need this output to be tied into that. So to do that, you delete this little tag, you right click on the body of the object and you say new, con nope, it's set output line. <laughs> there we go, set output line. Okay, so this is what you want it to look like to actually say if position greater than four, go move zero into position. But these 11 lines of ladder, and you can see it's quite a bit more scrolling than this little view of structured text, but functionally identical, setting these same preliminary values and then sequencing through the PLC. And just so you can see that it's functionally identical, I'm gonna go ahead and delete this out of this, uh, out of this structured text. 
And then I'm just going to delete, actually, I'm just going to delete main out of the routine so that the only thing on here is this ladder routine. And now I'm going to download it to my PLC. I will compile it. And I've got it up here. Make sure you got a good view. Okay. Push the button. Blue turns on. And we're cycling through it exactly like the structured text that we had at the start of the video. Okay, so I know it uh, might seem a little odd to rather than build something from scratch, compare it to structured text, but I really think if you're a PLC programmer, uh, it's really important to understand how ladder logic correlates to structured text. Those are by far the two most common PLC programming languages that drive entire factories. So knowing both of them is a really good idea. I hope you found this introductory tutorial useful. Be sure to let me know in the comments below what you want to see next on the channel. Um, that's going to do it for today's starter video on ladder logic. Thank you to Arduino for providing the hardware used in this video. So Arduino once again is making uh, things more accessible for hobbyists and makers. So thank you very much to Arduino. I'll see you next time. Thank you so much for watching. Thanks. Bye.